And we are coming down in three, two, one. Sports with Drunk. I'm your host, Cupcake the Riddler, and I'm joined by just J Mart <laughs> and the Red Baron. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we're short staffed today. Um, uh, K Quick Souls um, is currently K Quicking the time for Burger King drive through. Oh. Um, he's just a guy that can't say no. That's what it comes down to. <laughs> the long and the short of it, he but just can't say just no. Loyal. Loyal. He is a loyal guy. Could you imagine if that guy actually liked sports? <laughs> I think it would, it, would, it would help him mightily, you know, so. with everything. I think he just needs to get some more knowledge. Right. Sports, yeah. Especially with, you know, the Pittsburgh, Philadelphia area teams. Yeah, big time. He needs to take his ass to college. <laughs> and Mock is, you know, the guy is just continuing his reign of success. I mean, last night we were at a, a graduation party for his uh, betrothed, Marissa, and all of a sudden, down the street, you just hear sirens, and everything's going nuts, and <clears throat> we go down the street to see what's happening, and all of a sudden, there's just this building engulfed in flames. Mock is sitting there. He's got a, t- he's currently double fisting two bush beers, and he's like, oh my God, and like you see this woman crying, and she goes, my son's still in the building. <laughs> Mock <laughs> chugs both of his beers. Throws the cans on the ground, one-handed, rips his Spider-Man shirt off to reveal another Spider-Man <laughs> shirt. Runs into the burning building. Comes out, smoldering in just ash and just, like, burned skin, everything. And he's got one kid over his shoulder and a 30-pack of beer he found in the fridge on his way out. What a hero. He puts the kid in, in the woman's arms, and he proceeds to drink all 30 beers just to find out this morning when we were asking if when he'd be ready to get picked up to come to the show it turns out there was actually an issue at the meriden airport and mock went in there and (laughs) single-handedly landed a plane through verbal communication it's remarkable i mean that's the reason we're late because he's such a hero you know it's just a lot to keep up with yeah the guy the guy's an american hero i mean i don't want to i don't want to get too ahead of myself but i mean comparisons to maybe walker texas ranger I think that's a, a great assessment, you know. I, he's a combination for me of between Walker, Texas Ranger, and the American treasure, Billy Ray Cyrus. Walker, Texas Cyrus. And Dr. King. <laughs> and Dr. Yeah. King. He's a guy's a hero. Golf club for Mock. But not for souls. <laughs> Definitely not for souls. <laughs> Whopper patties for souls. <laughs> um, so, yeah, we'll do a quick uh, starting lineup. It's brief today. Oh uh, yeah, we're, it's like that game that Colin Sexton had, where it was just him and two other guys versus a whole team. Do you remember that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that thing you sent about J.R. Smith was so funny. Oh. So Jamar, I got uh the Sun Juice from Stony Creek here in Brantford. Yeah, no, that was for me. That's an interesting pick for you. I just that doesn't really peg you as a. Well, I mean, I do peg you, but um, <laughs> it's a good backstory. I got uh, a six pack of it for Amanda's father. Father's Day he goes here. Take one. <laughs> it's like all right, <laughs> okay. I know what I'm doing with this. Red Baron, I have your Schaefer. <laughs> no, I do. Yeah, I love it. It's in the Schaefer, can, too. Schaefer beer. That's what. The Schaefer still make it in the bottles? I don't know. I didn't even know they still made beer. <laughs> yeah, they used to have a slogan. It's like it's the perfect beer for when you're planning on having more than one beer. <laughs> it's like that's, I can get down with that. <laughs> Did we have forties at that one time. Oh man, did uh, we? I don't. You know, probably. I, I know you guys well, have had the the O E. Oh, yeah, old English. Oh, yeah. Yes, we got. Yeah, it was oh, a time. In, it was a time in which yeah, we went to the laundry mat to do some laundry. There was a liquor store across the street. We thought, what could be more white trash than getting some forties and waiting for the laundry to be done? <laughs> and that's what we did. Yeah. Oh, that, that's a terrible, <laughs> terrible forty too. And the best part is it just got so warm. Yeah, it was a hot day. Yeah, and then we're surrounded by hot dryers. It was just terrible. 
Uh, I have a tiny, beautiful something from the main brewing company, Pale Ale. Slogan is, do what's right. Do what's right. And drink. Uh, Toast Excellence? Ooh, I'm behind the curve here. Um, you know what? I have one. Okay. Joey Bats. First home run with the Mets, his third of the season. I got to watch it live on TV, and it was wonderful. The Mets went on to lose that game 4-2. Uh, or maybe five two. I can't remember. But uh, was it, it was, two? Was it two nothing going into the, the ninth? Oh, it was. It was no. It was four four nothing. Uh, after uh, also they they rallied. They, they had a failed. grand slam in the nice fifth or six. Took them three months to hit one. <laughs> yeah, Wheeler gave up a grand slam. Hurt me. Hurt me inside. But yeah, Joey Betts. You know he. You know he just bleeds blue and orange. Mm. <laughs> Very loyal guy. Very loyal Very guy. Loyal guy. Great, uh, great ball player. Yeah. <laughs> Mine is uh, just more encompassing. Just uh, everybody at the uh, that won awards at the NHL uh, award ceremony this week. Specifically, the Golden Knights walked away with four pieces of hardware for a new franchise, but not the Stanley Cup. <laughs> Sorry, that's Sorry. right. It's more than, more than the Penguins walked away with. It's right. more than the Blackhawks walked away with. Mine's gonna go to uh, Giannis. For oh, a great <laughs> quote, oh my I believe God. he was was he Facebook Live, yeah, and a fan had asked him, "Do you play Fortnite?" And he said, "Fortnite, no, but <laughs> but I foreplay at night." <laughs> <laughs> and winked. There apparently there was like another interview that he did to it, but there was like like, "Oh, what are you drinking there?" Oh, this is my first time drinking American Kool Aid. Oh, like, yeah. not bad. <laughs> He, he's pretty legendary when it comes to that kind of thing. Yeah, he's, he deserves more attention, like on, he does. on bar stool and he stuff does. like that. Very underrated guy. Yeah. Oh, what was the other thing he said? Uh, someone asked him, like, what he thinks of Mo, or if Mo Bamba is better than him. He goes, Mo, who the hell is Mo? <laughs> 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 then when he finds out, he's like, Oh hell no! <laughs> uh, uh, so good, so good. Um, as far as other things, oh, we'll crack the beers first, and then then we'll. We'll delve into some stuff, gentlemen. I actually got a pretty good sound out of the. the now, is there even a point in trivia? Well, I actually don't. I don't know. remember because it was me and Kyle. I think both lost. I don't know. I know I owe five shots. We'll we'll oh, pay because of my the, dumbass the, the Michael picks. Port. I can't believe that. We will pay your shots forward to when Kyle's here to do his. Good. Good. That's it's fair. No, it's no fun having just two people sit here and watch you do five shots. We'll wait I, until... We can still do trivia. I can just get a question real quick. I we can just do uh, shots. Because <laughs> we get, I mean, because you figure you owe five shots, Kyle's going to owe five shots, Kyle and Mark both owe shots for absentees. That's right. Um, so they're just... And we don't, so we'll just... We'll, we'll re-up the pond water for next week. Or the, in two weeks, actually. That's right. Because next week, um, we will have a... Uh, our brewery shows will be playing in our normal 11 to 1 spot on Sunday because the Getting Sports with Drunk Crew is hitting the road again for a Philadelphia Phillies game. For a Washington Nationals game. <laughs> uh, Want to see the Nationals. <laughs> uh, through a lot of phone calls and uh, aggravation, <laughs> we were able to get five tickets together, but uh, it was for Kyle's birthday. It is impressive, though. Yeah. So what do you get him? A month? Not even a month in advance. Maybe three weeks, right? Or was it a full month? It might have been a full month. You know, yeah, what, it, it might have been. I think it just time flies. Fucking bullshit. Yeah. Yeah. Five in a row is pretty tough, especially when you get to see Bryce Harper. Well, especially when like the was... fucking sit, guaranteed. <laughs> especially when there's already when there was already four purchased and we had to find a fifth seat. Mm. Kendall, hey, you do good work. But anyway, we're going to the Phillies game Saturday. Nationals game. No, sorry, we're going to the we're going to the Philadelphia Nationals game. Which honestly, it's kind of like a better name anyway, because I mean the Liberty Bell's there. The ben Phil- Franklin's Philly is just—it's just a bad team name. Sorry, Phillies fans. <laughs> the Philly Phillies. It's like we could be the Pittsburgh Pitsies. That's that's what you sound like as a Philadelphia. The Philly. Pitsies, I like that. The Pitsies. The New York Yorkies. Ooh. Eh. Chicago. Chickies. Chickies. That one doesn't. That one. <laughs> because it's different C's. Yeah, yeah. We've gotten way off track. <laughs> anyway, so we're going to uh, be the Miami Miamis. <laughs> we need to make this happen, <laughs> Miami, Miami. All right, <laughs> um, get on the horn, write a letter. Um, yes, yeah, so we're gonna be Dear in uh, Derek. Philadelphia Saturday and Sunday. Um, we'll post plenty of content from the game, all the beers we're drinking, 
I want to get a Facebook Live of Kyle chugging a beer. Yeah. Short video, but we'll go live for it. No, it's Kyle chugging a beer. It's going to take at least oh, 45 that's a bit, seconds. That's a I don't remember <laughs> what the beer selection is at City. Or not City. What the hell are they? Uh, Citizens Bank. Citizens Bank. I don't do they. The goal is, look, we're going to have plenty of time to, when we get there. The goal is to find the the biggest beer store we can and find out what the Philadelphia Icy Light is. <laughs> Lemonade. <laughs> For those of you that don't know, Icy Light is uh, or Iron City from Iron City Brewing <laughs> is a, a staple. Of our is a staple. <laughs> yeah, it is a Pittsburgh beer. Um, it is. <laughs> it's got banners at um, PNC Park. <laughs> it's and just a legendary. We bought a thirty of it because it was Pirates cans. We went there for a Pirates trip for Jeff, and uh, we, you know, it's not that great out of a can. Amazing on draft for some reason. It doesn't make any sense. Like you know, they probably totally just put a beer. hand. It was probably a different beer. They probably just put the icy handle oh, on it. Could you imagine that? <laughs> <laughs> we were, just we like, were drinking Bud Light. <laughs> oh, this is the best. <laughs> just so disappointed. Best Bud Light I've ever had. <laughs> so do you have a question? I do. All I right. do. Uh, it's about Jamal Charles. <laughs> Randomly. <laughs> this is, this is <laughs> Jamal Charles. All right. How many inches uh, of ligaments have been torn in his legs? <laughs> Did he compete in the Special Olympics? <laughs> All right. So what do you think he did? <laughs> what it was? I don't know. <laughs> I can't remember what he did. It was, um, but his lowest rushing total was versus the Miami Dolphins. The Miami Miamis. How many? That's yar- a baseball thing. How many yards right. did he have that game? He had forty-eight. I mean, I feel like he had to have had like a like a zero game now. I don't know. Uh, or something like like something really. Lo- I don't know. Is there a minimum carries? In the uh, I don't have that information. All right, You're um, starting to look more like a zero. But we'll go 40. It's not, it's not 40 like whatever play. Or 48. 48. All right, I'm going to say 31. 15. Uh-oh. First, the Dolphins. One. I don't have that. It doesn't either. matter because they weren't good. <laughs> and, you know, Charles was no schmuck. I mean, is no schmuck. No, was no schmuck. He's a schmuck now. <laughs> He's a schmuck now. Yeah. Big time schmuck. Um, yeah. Yep, yep, yep. And that's I gotta find this thing. thing. <laughs> <laughs> this thing was so Catch us next week. Uh, be sure to follow us. On, no. Uh, <laughs> you know, I'm almost sad that Kyle's not here because I really want to get into the draft. I mean, for a guy that took two minutes, I'm going to admit that. I took about two minutes to make up my mock draft. I got the first five right. <laughs> or four. Kyle did not. I, I, listen, I think you bring up some good points. Tell you what, though, that was a weird, weird night. So another thing, too, I didn't realize, I, the draft starts at 7.30. I thought it was 8. Ah. So, oh, so you guys tuned in, so and it was like in, the, the sixth pick? Yeah. Was, uh, <laughs> oh, wait, <laughs> what is this? Oh, half hour? It was probably the, the recap of the first pick. <laughs> yeah. I, it was like 6 or 7. Uh. I, I can't remember. But so missed what? the whole first. Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. Just, well, okay. I interrupted you. I just thought all the drafts started at 8. Dun, dun, Freaking dun, dun, dun. NBA. Mm. So, my favorite thing currently on Instagram is this account called Not Sports Center. And it's just... They are good. It's just making fun of Sports Center. But I'm just... I love it so much because they they shit up all over what Sports Center is. And they are really, really highlighting how much ESPN loves to talk about LeBron James. Mm-hmm. And then how much they love Trey Young. The kid who was just drafted. Um, so this is the summer of Trey Young and LeBron, and they've just been posting stuff. And like this one they posted on draft day was ESPN's grades for the Atlanta Dallas trade. Atlanta A plus 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 comments got Trey Young. Dallas F traded away Trey Young. <laughs> <laughs> and then um and the, the Lakers the Magic draft Mo Bamba sixth overall, who has already agreed to a 2023 free agency contract with the Lakers. Uh, they're just they're so perfect with it that guy um what the hell is his name luca i can never remember was it davinich to davinich something like yeah, that yeah 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 did you see uh andre iguodala's tweet about his mom yes i saw that <laughs> she decent <laughs> or, or luca's mom de- like <laughs> nice <laughs> they posted this one about dwight howard team by team which i actually talking to kyle said i didn't realize he already got waved by the nets yeah yeah, they they bought him out, which is good because now he's gonna, get, he's gonna get paid. So now he can just take a veteran minimum somewhere. Yeah, that's what I mean. You don't have to worry about cap. If he wants to, 
What's one team that has one position? Or sorry, that doesn't have a center, a dominant center, but has a dominant every other position and bench. Golden State. Yeah. Imagine that. Then you add literally also the polar though, op, but he's worked on his jumper. So I but mean, but the other thing too is you know where he, you know where else I think he'd be a really good fit? Boston. Because it allows Horford to play the four yeah, more. But they they already they drafted the kid. They got Baines, who they're resigning. I mean, it would be an upgrade. I, I thought that, too, and then everyone online just that shit on that. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> it was the, the, ESPN, the not ESPN, sorry, also posted this Dwight Howard's team-by-team team, or team-by-year thing. So it was 15 Rockets, 16 Hawks, 17 Charlottes, 18 Nets, 19 Phoenix Mercury, 20 <laughs> Maryland <laughs> Terrapins, 21 Flint Tropics, 22 YMCA All-Stars. <laughs> Flint Tropics. <laughs> what if? He goes to Charlotte now that he's a free agent. <laughs> goes back. See that that trade cracks me up. It's like, oh, we got to get rid of um, you know the tax that Howard brings. Let's go and get an equally expensive garbage <laughs> center in Moscow. I, I thanks Michael Jordan. <laughs> Do you see the guy who got drafted by Cleveland? He's already trying to make bids for LeBron. Yeah, it's all Sexton. Yeah. I tell you what, he's my favorite for rookie of the year though. That oh man. The, do you remember the video they do in the post co- the press conference thing after the game, and LeBron like is like that's what you got to say I'm out and he stands up he puts his glasses on he's got his little like suitcase thing with him they should come the someone posted a picture of that was like Kyle Sexton question mark yeah I'm out <laughs> there's a picture of that wow, uh, that kid's that kid's gonna turn heads though let me tell you <laughs> let me tell you he's gonna turn heads I'm just, I just can't believe Porter Jr. went fourteenth. Is that the biggest slide we've seen in it's, the modern era? It's up there. I mean, the guy's coming off a really shitty back injury, but... Well, there's, I'll say there's also speculation he won't play this year, right? Yeah, but I mean, that's worked for a certain team that I really thought was going to take him after he started to fall. <clears throat> Kyle. <laughs> but uh, there's so much upside. And okay, yeah, he's got that injury, but uh, he's not the first guy to have that injury. He's not going to be the last guy. He's not going to be the, the last guy to sit out a year before he plays. I mean, it worked for fucking Ben Simmons. Yeah. He had a great sophomore year. Embiid. <laughs> yep. The whole Sixers fucking Okafor, roster. Noel. Oh, especially <laughs> Nerlens. I wish you could have seen Kyle's face. Oh, you, you saw the video that we posted on. Dude, they did him dirty, though. That, that pick. It's like, how do you let him go up there and start talking about how happy you are to be a Sixer if you know damn well you're trading him? Yeah. I... Like, they were on the phone. It's like, someone get him off the stage. Yeah, it's just, it's embarrassing. And I think it is, his mom, yeah, mom, his mom the, works or something. She's the, the a, s- HR or something for the Sixers. It's just ah, it's like, oh. she, she's up there. They're doing the interview. It's and then uh, actually, <laughs> actually, you're you're not gonna play here. Yeah. We're gonna send you. Where do you go, Phoenix? Phoenix. It's just embarrassing. You're gonna go suffer yeah. in Phoenix <laughs> instead of be a part of this. It's a dry heat. You'll like it. Uh, uh it was a weird, weird draft. And then there's my my boys, the Knicks. You know, everything says take Bridges. Before the Sixers can do that to him, and what do we do? Yeah, we like Kevin Knox. He'll be good in three years. <laughs> but if I've learned anything, he's going to prove me wrong. Well, well true. that's it's the true. hope. Let me go back to the Not Sports Center Instagram, based off what you just said. <laughs> and they did their own mock draft the day before the draft. Oh, God. The top ten picks. They did a mock draft for the top ten picks. Phoenix, already demanding a trade. Number two, Sacramento, an all-star after leaving. Number three, traded for nothing. <laughs> Four Memphis already hurt. Number five Dallas won't matter. Number six Orlando future Laker. Number seven <laughs> Chicago will be hurt by game three. Nice. Number eight guy Le- Cleveland guy LeBron will hate. Number nine New York Knicks bust unless he's European. Number ten Philadelphia right. guy New York Knicks should have taken. <laughs> <laughs> yep. I was sad, but you know, fuck it. <laughs> I was sad for the last three drafts. When I look at the guy, I'm like, oh, this is the guy we keep talking about getting. He's available. And we pick him. Okay. But Jeff has learned. Yep, I'm not going to write him off yet. Two very previous drafts that magic can happen. But uh, Michael Porter Jr. was available, and so was Mikel Bridges. Yeah, but you guys. So was Miles Bridges. You guys could have traded Porzingis for, like, the rights to Jeff Van Gundy. I would like that. (laughs) I want Stan as well. I want them both. (laughs) (laughs) Could you (laughs) <laughs> it's like the the Ryan brothers <laughs> of yeah. basketball. Dual coaching. Uh, uh, it's only going to coach so the, the away games. It's like, but I just don't. What? <laughs> no, do you remember when uh, freaking. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what the whole thing with Phil was. Yeah. 
gonna, Phil was only going to coach fucking home games if he was a coach. And then they're like, so oh. stupid. Well, you know what, Phil? We can't do that. That's but stupid. we'll offer you this. <laughs> and you could torture us for years. But the worst thing is, see, like, I, I every time I get mad about the pick, but this one I'm, I'm confused about. I'm not mad because he's a good player, and who knows what it'll turn out to be. But you, you just got Cantor and Porzingis. Okay, Michael Beasley's coming off a good year. You draft another big after we have a logjam of bigs with Noah and all the bullshit. <laughs> We've been trying to get rid of a big. You draft another stretch big type dude. I don't know. I, I'm a, trusting the in, bag. in the new organization because they have a whole whole new staff. We'll see. Fuck it. Second round. Anybody watch any second round? No. 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 It's it's a, dis- it's a disgrace. Kyle did, I bet. Probably the whole thing. <laughs> He, he recorded it, watched it back. It's just like, it's whatever. There's I, some good guys. But Kyle, he's the guy that said it actually last. Oh, no one ever gets picked good. In the second, like, yeah, they're still good players. Look at Isaiah Thomas. But just, uh, I can't watch it. It's boring. Oh, PSA real quick. Um, For those of you who haven't seen uh, Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom yet, um, what are you doing? Are we getting paid for this? No, I wish. Damn. Oh. Think of all the merch. It was so... Don't stop. I just got such a boner. <laughs> it was so good. Spent $12 on a plastic T-Rex head that holds popcorn. Worth it. 100%. That's what I said. The minute I did she was like, I was like, how much is it? She goes, $12. I was like, worth it. <laughs> oh, shit. I would have given you 20 <laughs> <laughs> What size popcorn does it hold? A medium? Fine. Don't put any butter in it, though. She said, Are you, you don't want butter on your popcorn? I'm like, no. It's not that I don't want butter on my popcorn. I don't want to get butter out of the T-Rex. Yeah. <laughs> but so I was thinking, cool. I might mount it to the dash. In the car Ooh. and fill it with like seeds or something, like just reach him on the What if you like insulate it? Oh, make it a cooler. Just like throw a little uh, straw that reaches out to the. That'd be cool. Make it like a giant margarita <laughs> thing. Until you like that one day where you put coffee in it, forget about <laughs> it for a week. Murky brown water. <laughs> fill it with heavy whipping cream. Oh my oh, god! And leave it in the car over the over the oh whole course god. of the summer. Oh. All right, so. I got an interesting uh, thing we can discuss here, NBA related. Um, who do you think, or what do you think is the best draft class ever? Hmm. <laughs> so let me throw out what That's I think m- most people's answers would be. Okay. And it would be 2003 because of Mellow, Wade, LeBron, and Bosch. And then um, other people are going to throw out you're names forgetting like... Darko. <laughs> other people are gonna throw, other people are throw out names like eighty four because first of all Jordan was drafted, but then it was also Elijah Wan, Barkley, and Josh I, I Stockton. I take you back to seventy three. Jerry West. No idea. <laughs> so, but I mean, so like those are two stars for the draft classes. But let's let's go through a couple other ones. I mean, the real the real dark horse in this that's not going to win it, but it's still worth mentioning is ninety eight. Paul Pierce, Vince Carter. And Dirk. The old heads. But, I mean, that's a big deal. Then you want to go back two years from that. In 96, you've got Kobe, AI, Ray Allen, and Steve Nash. Hmm. Uh, what was Duncan, 97? Was he a year after or before? I think it was the year after Kobe. Uh, but then, and then you go back to 87. You've got David Robertson, um, Isaiah Thomas. Not Isaiah Thomas. Um can't think of who that is. Ryder. I don't know. He's wearing a New York Knicks jersey. Anyway, Robertson, Pippen, and Reggie Miller. Dan Ewing. <laughs> but just, like, those are big names. <laughs> and you go back to you go 85. You got Ewing, Chris Mullen, and um, uh, Carl Malone. Like, those are those are big drafts. Yeah. Calderon was, what, 81? <laughs> um, he was two years after the guy. I don't care what they say. That guy's fifty-eight years old. <laughs> he was two years after Bartolo, so that Bartolo was seventy-seven. So no, he was seventy-nine. <laughs> they were roommates, actually. <laughs> oh, you know, I'm, I'm gonna be there. <laughs> they went to Tunxis Community College. <laughs> <laughs> this be, the only thing I liked about having Calderon on the Knicks was I remember they posted something on him having like a three-point game or whatever, and the, someone's comment was like, "He looks like a, a crack whore." <laughs> <laughs> it's like what? I mean, he just looks like an old Argentinian guy. <laughs> Crack whore. He sucks. 
So I mean, I guess the the the, the thing is, it's going to really come down to probably between eighty four and 03. and right. because and everything always stems back to LeBron and Jordan. But draft class wise, though. a lot of people. I mean, like there's so the thing is, is like we'd have to really get in depth with the yeah. whole draft, really. Um, because but you but you look at like ninety six for me is the AI Kobe Steve Nash and Ray Allen. I mean, all you're Hall talking about yeah, you're talking about arguably the greatest player of all time. The gr- the greatest handles point guard ever, pound for pound greatest player, I think we could say. Yeah, um, arguably the greatest point guard ever, in terms of, yeah, scoring and ball distribution and just all around talent. First ever back to back MVP, and then probably the best shooter, in NBA history. Yeah. And that's <laughs> it's pretty star studded. I mean. In my opinion, I think the most exciting draft class in terms of player-wise was 98. Because what Vince Carter does, yeah, the amount the amount of game winners I've seen Paul Pierce hit. It's the truth. And just Dirk just being Dirk. Dirk you for know, me is, he's the, he's the last, like, right off into the sunset we have left. I yeah. feel like from our generation for, for sports, not counting hockey. He's never going to retire long. because they're never going to figure out his fatal <laughs> Yeah. No one has, and it's been what did you play for twenty years, mm. and you still like it's. There's no way to guard that, even if it's been really, really super slow mo now. Yeah, <laughs> it, just, it looks almost lazy. But uh, I mean, in, in, in football, I mean, for us, it's not as big of a thing. But I mean, there's still Tom Brady. I mean, we're not Brady fans per se, what? but <laughs> love Brady. Big but, I mean, time Patriots fan right here. So, but I mean, like, so for those people who do, like, that's obviously going to be a right off into the sunset kind of deal. Mm-hmm. But I mean. You really look in football, like, all of the guys that we grew up watching are gone. Yeah. Sad. Pey- Peyton Manning. Mike. Oh, Drew Brees. We saw Drew Brees, too. He's going to break the record. Him and Brady are both going to break it. Not if Brady croaks. <laughs> yeah. Or chokes, I mean. <laughs> but, I mean, we got, do I. we got Brady and Brees, but Manning's gone. Vic's gone. Calvin Johnson's gone. Marcus Vick's gone. <laughs> Marcus Vick. Jamarcus Russell. Um... <laughs> But Ladanian Tomlinson, Brady Quinn. <laughs> you're talking, you know, Curtis Martin. You're talking about all these guys, and then you go to sports like baseball. I mean, it's happening. You know, I lost Konerko, Mark Grudzelanik. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> I lost Konerko. We just lost Ortiz. We just lost Jeter. I mean, David Wright's pretty much David gone. David Wright's never coming back. I mean, he keeps saying he's coming back. He's never coming back. I mean, <laughs> Jason Bay. <laughs> Vince is still Snail. around. Vince is still around, but he's essentially retired. I mean, he'll be in the big three. Oh, God. See, Nate already scuffling. I like it. Yeah. Actually, I sent the. the yeah. Oh, okay. Go ahead. Oh, so you sent me a picture. I was oh. saying that. Oh, sorry. Go Let's ahead. Go ahead. All right. The Riddler sent me a picture uh, when I guess they they go around. Different, yeah. different so they cities. play. They play on a Saturday mm-hmm. in a city, and every every team plays. It's like a they're, they're coming turn. to Bridgeport. It's, it's, like a jam- <laughs> it's like a jamboree essentially. But every team, so like, what is it? There's ten teams, I think. Yeah. So they play five. They play all five games because there's no time limit. It's the first one to forty. That's cool. And then there's a halftime. Whoever gets the twenty. Type Wait. of deal. So they play all five games. In fact, back to back to back to back to back. So it's just like an all-day thing. I, I'm pretty sure. I, we, we haven't had a chance to go yet, I, but I, I would assume you just buy a ticket for the day. I can't see them yeah, trying to shuffle people in and out. Is for it televised? Did yeah. they make any TV so deal? It's yeah. not yeah. televised live, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, you could stream it's, it, though. It's live on Facebook, and then they stream, and then they, they play on Sunday nights. They, they'll play all the matchups on FS1. Okay. But it's not live on FS1. So what are you guys doing tonight? <laughs> Anyone got FS1? <laughs> it's like, just remember, I have 20 channels. <laughs> I think actually I have FS1. You have everything. I know. I got like every channel. <laughs> the bar has <laughs> FS1. I, I got even more channels now. It's all like these uh, European. You get the 700s? I do. You have randomly get Chicago sports. You know what I'm talking about? What about the 7,000s? I, I don't know if I get 7,000, but I get 700. Do you get. If I'm watching Playboy, it better be an HD. <laughs> <laughs> you get the <this> stuff. <laughs> Shout Beach out to Tobias. Babes 14. <laughs> Babysitters gone wild. <laughs> but you, it was the picture. He, uh, sent me uh, a picture of uh, Nate Robinson and uh, Trey the Truth, one of my uh, favorite rappers from Houston. 
Yeah. It's funny. Yeah. Uh, Trey's only a little bit taller than he, than he was. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Trey's really short. Yeah. He's like, what is he, like 5'5"? Five, five? Oh, I forgot right. what it was. It was Ice Cube a couple days ago. It was like an event to promote it, and it was him and Bun B. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, they, I forgot what they did. It's funny. Ice Cube doesn't look like Ice Cube anymore. He just No, you know who looks like Ice Cube? His son. His son. Son, yeah. scary. Except uh, they, I forgot who was interviewing him. And he was wearing uh, the Oakland, it was, it was either an Oakland shirt with like a Another team on his head. I, I don't remember. <laughs> what are you doing? O'Shea. <laughs> O'Shea Jackson. <laughs> yeah. You know, Kyle really dropped the ball. Let's talk about that for a second. I had this great... Well, Kyle helped. But we had this great free agency show planned for today. And it would have been the perfect show to do for today. But Kyle couldn't say no to work. So we had to push the free agency bo- show back two weeks. Mox still recovering. And from heroism. <laughs> it's already a shit show. We gotta, I got to rework the whole show. Because the Friday before that Sunday is NBA free agency. Oh, man. So now we got to <sighs> figure out what we're going to do for that. Also, one of the hockey free agents signed because he's coming from Europe. So he doesn't follow NF- no. NHL for free. <laughs> so we're already down one, and we're going to be down a lot more by the time. You know what's funny, though? If you didn't say that, we would have all been rambling like, oh, yeah, we could see this guy being a fit here. He already signed. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Did he? Oh, that would have been a good segment. I shouldn't have said anything. Have you guys all, like, play it out? Well, because Kyle know. would know. But Kyle would know. Not the hockey. No, not the hockey. But, like, play it all out, and you guys say, like, oh, I think you could go here or whatever. And then I just give out shots for everybody who's wrong. <laughs> Oh, there's also found this other thing. We're gonna we're gonna get these on the show. They're a little expensive, but I think they're worth it. Are so they there's the things that we found on Kyle's phone. No, <laughs> the rubber thing. <laughs> oh the, no, the mounted the mounted <laughs> butt. <laughs> um, there's these new things Souls. called licks. <laughs> so they are. <laughs> <laughs> they are double shots, oh, and boy. they're kind of like the you know the, the twist things yeah, that we did yeah, on the yeah. show. They're kind of like those, but it's a pre-made shot in the glass. So it's not like the twist thing, but it's like they have a kamikaze, they have like a B-52, oh, okay. a lemon drop type of deal. And it's two shots per thing, and I think they're like 30%. And nice. They're, I think it's like four or five Take bucks. Take those to work. I mean, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Like four or five <laughs> bucks for a pack of three of them, but supposedly they're really good. I think we should do a show one time where we, we, don't, we don't have any beer on the show. We just do those. We get real hammered. And we just... Getting drunk with drunk. Well, we just get one of each. And we just throw them in a bucket, and you just got to reach in and grab one type of deal for whatever. I like that. We're going to do that. So we do it from a remote location. We go fishing, and we just record from a canoe while we're doing this. Imagine the equipment falls in the water. (laughs) (laughs) Kyle goes to cast a pole. It's really one of the mics. Amazon, I think it's for like $79.99 or something like that. They have a uh, 75-foot waterproof extension cord. So we could could leave the equipment on land and just run the extension cord. (laughs) Could you imagine? (laughs) That'd be awesome. I think we should do it. I want to do... Uh, we just Facebook Live the show. That's true. From from someone's phone. Yeah. Quick, wanna, quick, connect to the feed. Uh, My phone's going to die. I want to <laughs> do the Dots Boot on the show. We Have we ever tried it? I don't think so. Didn't we... Uh, we did it at Maple once. Just But wasn't... Oh, why am I thinking... We did the Stein Challenge on the show. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking of. The boot wasn't a part of that, though, at the end. No, I don't think no. so. Yeah, we'll do the boot. Do a Facebook Live. I'd we'll like do a So it was uh, hats yeah. versus tats, I believe. Yeah. No, hats and tats versus... Yeah, hats and tats That's versus Mock true. and Kyle. <laughs> what a what an unfair advantage. <laughs> Not only did we have tats, but we have hats. <laughs> hats. <laughs> and they were backwards. Yeah. You know, and the thing was, just for that, because we, we, we thought of the team name right before we started recording, I ripped the sleeves off the shirt. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So you could see the tattoos. We're uh, uh, stupid. We're just... We're a stupid group. I'd love to do, like, beer pong, but there'd be nowhere to do it. <laughs> oh, in here? In here. This is no place to... <laughs> Whoa. That's a hoist. <laughs> Looking well, around here. No, I mean, if we, we could clear out the bed, and no one can see this that we're talking, but we could clear out against that wall and put the table a long ways there. That's true. I mean, then, because we don't use that equipment anyway, so we just turn all the microphones up and away. Oh, also, uh, Peter said we could uh, hang some of the, the stuff. you got the posters... Nice. We're going to have a getting sports with drunk wall. That way when we have guests, they can take pictures in front of it. It'll be just like all the red carpet things. 
Except Blake Lively won't be here, sadly. I'll send a couple emails out. Oh, also, Blake Unlively. Shout here. out, shout out to uh, she's hideous. Marissa's grad party again from last night. I got a lot of looks from a lot of people because uh, when Mock requested "Achy Breaky Heart" to be played, and we were all sitting on the little patio thing dancing, he was like, "This is America's treasure," and I very loudly made some sort of comment about, "Yeah," and his semen created my love child, <laughs> and I got a lot of really dirty looks for saying that very loudly. <laughs> but my, they're happy. just. They don't understand. <laughs> they don't get it. <laughs> so what do you think predictions for the Phillies game? Six you, to one. Nationals? Six to... Well, here's the thing. I have a very good feeling that Adrian Beltre will be suiting up as a Philly by the time we're actually there. That'd There's cool. a lot of talks. That'd be cool. And I mean, Franco sucks. Kyle... I think Kyle actually agrees. I can't remember. But my, my Cal Franco's just He'll say he not doesn't good. just because you say he sucks. If Kendall said he I sucks, he'd agree. we had the conversation, though, because he was big on him when he came up. I, I thought he was going to be good. Yeah, he's, he's not having a good year. not doing anything. Just not at all. It's not like he's that good defensively, either. It doesn't... Is he third always, base? Yeah. Always looking for the home run. Goes you know what he there. reminds me of? It's the third base version of Lastings. <laughs> <laughs> Lastings Millage is a, is a player of his own. Miss him. Can't be compared to anybody. Legend. Yeah. Why is he 6-4? Six 6-4 to four. Six to four national. I'm going to tell you, whoever, I think we're getting either Arietta or Velasquez, which I think they're getting, whoever, Paul if it's Rogers. one of them, it's going to be a, a good starting showing, but the second the second the Phillies bullpen has to play, it's that's when the Nationals are going to capitalize. Yeah. And then, mm-hmm. I mean, who knows who the Nationals, it depends who pitches, because I mean, Scherzer, Tanner Rourke. <laughs> yeah. A little bit of a disconnect there. <laughs> so who, it, it's really going to depend who's getting the ball. Actually, I'm going to try to look in this, see if it's – I don't think it would be ready yet, but we could estimate. I wish it just always worked out that – like, I mean, obviously injuries, I know that, but I, like, I wish it just worked out that, like, the pitching rotation just stayed on, like, the five. Like, nobody ever took extra rest or, mm-hmm. or had to come in early or something like that. So when you buy tickets, like, you know, that, that – because that, if every team does that, if you have a five – uh, pitcher rotation that means that every fifth game it's going to be an ace and an ace right that'd be cool to see that would be no. that was one of the best no. sports moments for me was watching uh, Burley and Sale go at it in Chicago real quick game and the crowd didn't know who to cheer for it's more like, it's like two hours <laughs> yeah and the, uh, the crowd didn't know who to cheer for more that was the thing I mean it was a big game because that was Sale's game where he was going for 11 consecutive game or outings of a uh, 10 plus strikeouts um which would have broken pedro's record um and so the crowd was you know there's a lot of people there and the crowd was really into it and then but when burley came out i mean you you thought sale was still on the mound like they were just so happy to have him miss him (laughs) hey he had some real douchey haircuts at the end (laughs) but he was just that guy was just so good I mean the 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 behind the the, the through the legs flip to the first baseman, yep. and then through a no hitter and a perfect game. One of which we watched. No, we watched the no hitter, and that was at at school. Yeah. Had some uh, wings over. Yeah, we watched we watched the movie. We can never remember what it yeah, was. So I wish Kyle was here so I could just ask him who pitched last night. <laughs> They, it's funny they're they're playing. Oh, here we go. They're playing each other right now. The Phillies and Nationals just in Washington. So let's see. Why do they make it so goddamn hard? I think the Phillies are going to win when we go. Here's the thing. I haven't seen them win when I've been there. <laughs> I don't think. Maybe I saw them win once. But I've seen Ryan Howard strike out with the bases loaded, <laughs> looking to end the game, oh. and watched Eric almost get kicked out of the stadium. <laughs> Not even a Phillies fan, but <laughs> he's just started yelling at Ryan Howard, you know, from I think we were somewhere on the first baseline, nowhere near him. <laughs> when we went, we got to see uh, Cliff Lee hit a home run. Yeah, which yeah. Which is pretty cool. That was incredible. And we also saw a guy get thrown out that that day too. <laughs> I don't yes, know. Yes, we did. He was just too drunk, I think. But I, I can't even remember what he was yelling. I just remember heckling former pirate Nate McClouth the whole time, <laughs> and his family was sitting right behind us. <laughs> okay, so I have the rotation. So, oh, fuck. so 
it looks like the rookie, the four starter, Fed Fide, whatever the hell's name is, pitched last night. That's not good news. Vince Shit. Velasquez for us. I'm trying to see if we're seeing if they're gonna see Scherzer first, and then I'll figure out the Phils. The good old fighting Phils. Fighting. All right. If I could fucking get oh a schedule. God. I'm looking at this thing at Mark Burley's perfect game. So he pitched it against the Rays in 2009. Um, it was the first perfect game that had been thrown since Randy Johnson's in 2004. And I thought I thought I didn't know this. I thought it was pretty cool. I thought like the no hitter would just be its would be like its own thing separate from the perfect game. Mm-hmm. But when you throw the perfect game, you also get the no hitter as well. Which I mean, I don't know. It's like, see, it's one of those things. Like for me, like I feel like there should be different stats. It's cool, but it, but like it, it's different. I mean, because the perfect right. game is no no base runners, right? <laughs> yeah. Because I mean, a no hitter is like you can throw a no hitter, but you can walk people, right? <laughs> we'll get yes. The, and you can have er- there can be errors. Yes. But in the perfect game, there has to be no fielding errors. There has to be no walks, right? right? You, just, you literally nobody can be on base, right? And um, but um, I was reading this thing. Tell me how terrible this is. You ready for this? So, Burley's perfect game was to become the first of three perfect games and the first of four no-hitters allowed by the Rays in less than three years. Oh, my God. Can you believe that, Jeff? <sighs> he's, he's deep in the, deep in the schedule. I'm, I'm, in the, the, I'm in the woods. Can you believe that? The Rays got no-hit four times in three oh, yeah, years. They, they, they're just the team to no-hit. <laughs> oh, boy. So, where are we going? Saturday the 30th is our game. Uh-oh. Yes. So. Do you know who the real hero of we're gonna get the oh. <laughs> We're going to get the five starter from the Nationals or Scherzer, depending on how they go rest-wise. Because if Scherzer pitches, he's going to have five days. Re- I don't think they're going to pitch him. We'll, we'll see. We're probably going to get Jeffrey Rodriguez. <laughs> nice. He's no. O and O with a four-year race. So, you know, the Phillies, Kyle could have a good day. It'd be a good day here. What about the Phils? That's what I'm working on now. You know who the real hero of Mark Burley's perfect game is, though? Who? Oh. You know who it is. Dwayne Weiss. <laughs> Dwayne. Dwayne Weiss. Dwayne Weiss. 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 <laughs> Robin, a home run in the bottom of the ni- or the top of the ninth inning. Didn't do anything else. Hey. But that's all that's all you need. I liked him. Yeah. He's a, he's on You the, would, wouldn't you? <laughs> he's on the list of uh Players I know that I would never know otherwise because of a White Sox milestone. For example, I always will remember who Chad Qualls is mm. because oh, he threw a pitch that ended up going into the fucking bleachers for a grand slam in the World Series. <laughs> yeah, that 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 sums up his, his entire career basically. <laughs> Just unfortunate. I, I talk about this all the time, but you know when Fernando Tatis hit the two grand slams <laughs> in one inning, that was <laughs> that was against Chan Ho Park. He gave up both those grand slams. <laughs> like, why would you not pull your guy? <laughs> so oh, could, you imagine getting, could you imagine giving up eight runs to the same guy? I, uh, God damn it. Good, good confidence builder. Go out your next start. Well, yeah, remember that? Kyle, unfortunately, if you can hear me, we're getting Pavetta. <laughs> 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 oh, sorry, not Pavetta. Velasquez. Yeah. Uh, I'm excited. Oh, boy. Two... Bottom of the rotation pitchers. I'm going to get some Velasquez socks. I just hope we see somebody pinch hit for the Nationals so that I can just say, hey, this is going to be a home run. <laughs> I'm trying yep. to think of who was funny on their, their bench, if anybody. I don't really know the Nationals. They've got a well. weird, weird bench. Yeah, kind of boring. Um, well, it depends because they have too many outfielders. So Matt Adams could be playing first or outfield or hitting. I think Zer- No, he's probably going to play first because I believe Ryan Zerman's hurt. Strasburg's hurt. I wish they had a uh, Denard Span still. I wish they had you know what's crazy? He's starting still. Where the Veritech. hell? I think he's they Seattle. Veritech. Excuse me. Jason. Need, need Jason Veritek. They need Veritek behind the plate. Brzezinski fat. playing first. <laughs> Who playing first? Brzezinski. I like Done that. at third. Oh, you get to see Adam Eaton. <gasps> That's a good point. For uh, uh, oh, he's hurt, isn't he? Let me check. He was. Because that's the whole... What was his injury? I don't know, but I'm gonna have to go digging through the storage unit for a specific <laughs> jersey. Oh, he man. might be back. Cause, uh, oh no, I got it. I got it. I just have to. You know, it, it's the perfect thing too. Oh, we talked about this. We always, Reed, Red Baron and I. Um, we've always had this discussion where, if you really like a player, if you really love a player on your team, the worst thing you can do is buy their jersey because they'll be gone. Yep. 
When I went to Chicago the year after we I, we graduated from college, I got two shirts, jer- like jersey shirts and a jersey. Adam Eaton, Chris Sale, and Alexi Ramirez. All gone within two years. <laughs> so, uh, you're good. He had four at-bats last night. Ooh. He went 0 for 4 with three strikeouts. That's fine. I don't, I don't care if he <laughs> does. He's only been team. back. Um, cause he, he was out for, he was on the 60 day DL. He got activated at the beginning of the month, so he's good. All right, I got some home. I got some uh, serious work to do this week. I wish I had a, a, a jersey of a guy who used to play for another you team. You do? Who? Uh, I don't know. Daniel Murphy? <laughs> <You're> <laughs> no, <sure. laughs> I got to burn my Matt Harvey shirt. Whoa. I'll do something with it. <laughs> Why don't you just get a new one? They look good in that nice <laughs> gray and red. <laughs> good jerseys. Uh, Great jerseys. I don't know. I, I'm, the, I'm usually not that guy. Like, oh, player leaves, burn the, the shirt, but I don't know. Fuck him. Kind of, fuck him. Kind of. So, we have a quick question before we go to break. Post, would you guys, so we're all sports games players here. Uh, Jeff and I are sports game buyers. Kendall's the, the mooch. Um, Big time mooch here. But, um. <laughs> <laughs> so Jim, yeah, you, buddy. <laughs> you actively play. The show in 2K. Yes. You get into Madden from time to time. Yes. I feel like I never buy Madden. I feel like I'm always the mooch for Madden. 100%. Because then I always take it. But for you, though, you you never play it. Yeah. You just start franchise. I know. There was one time I went through my save data at Maple, and there there had to have been 40 Saints franchises. I get so bored with the same team. (laughs) That's why you know what you got to do? Just do a play game. Don't even start a franchise. (laughs) Save myself an hour of setup time. That's the whole fun of it. Yeah. Yeah, because half, oh, half of those, he didn't even get to that regular season. He oh, no. Hated, he hated the team. There was one I really liked, and then I just stopped for no reason. <laughs> but, um, what was the thing? Oh, what I do is when I make a, when I fantasy draft a team or something like that in Madden, and I start to get bored of it, because Madden does take significantly longer than every other game, I, I just drop it to two-minute quarters, and it makes it way more exciting because every score is very detrimental. Oh, yeah. And oh, your defense yeah. always seems to give up big, you know. Yeah. But anyway, so the games are, they're 60 bucks a game, right? Would you be willing to pay $100 a game if included in with whatever, you know, the, the they put in? So, like, you know, 2K, they put all the legendary teams. And then for, like, the show, they usually do, like, an all-star hitting team and an all-star pitching team or whatever. Would you pay an extra $40 if they would make a team, like, your favorite team, with your favorite players all time on the team, so you could play with that team in like exhibition or start a franchise with them. No, no. Just because I could do that kind of, you know. What I'm saying, but like all in their prime with their prime stats and stuff like that. And what are you talking about? Like when you could do it by making making them and create a player. Well, like you could edit them, and it takes you know days, What's hours think about to it for do like, it. Think about it though, for like like the show, for example, like for me, like I would have to completely create a lot of players yeah. from scratch. Like I, I, Burley's not in the game. Well, Ramirez isn't in the game. Have you checked out the the Jermaine ball. Die you is can, not in the you game. You can download them, and it's essentially in the same. You know how people make those rosters, and yeah. you're like, how does someone actually sit here and like recreate all these guys that aren't in the game? You could go through. I forgot how. I think if it's right in that same area, but people create different players. Hmm. And it's all alphabetized. There's like 50 people that made Adam Dunn. So just Pick see one. which one looks better. Like they got him one with a beard, one on the reds, and one here. And you could download like those files. So oh, you could cool. realistically make the team. Hmm. I don't know if – like there's uh, probably some guys that no one's made. But, I mean, someone made fucking uh, Pete Rose. Tim Tebow's in there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. Well, we'll go to break. We'll take a we'll take a brief intermission so that uh, everyone can poop, um, because everybody does poop. Everybody poops. Um, when we come back, we'll have a Riddler's ranking um, that Kendall is going to come up with. Yep, I got it. And uh, we'll just bullshit more sports. Oh yeah. So until then. Welcome back to Getting Sports with Drunk. I'm your host, is Cupcake the Riddler, and I'm still joined by J-Mart and the Red Baron. Yeah. 
Um, no. <laughs> this is, if you're just joining us now, uh, Souls is uh, the Whopper King right now. And uh, Mach is recovering from uh, his heroism. Another really just brave, um, selfless act by him. True American hero. Oh, yeah. I have just endless <coughs> respect for him. He's like a, he's like a like an average Joe Jeff Bridges. <laughs> yeah, really. Um, we are Facebook awesome. Live, so you can go ahead and join the conversation there. We'd be glad to hear what you what you all have to say. Say something, please. Say it. Say, Say it. it. Call us assholes. Please. You know, ask us questions. Um, tell us what Red, you think of Red Kyle. Band, where can they find the video? <laughs> we are on uh, Peter M. Pino's page. I'm having trouble actually getting it right now. I had it, and it says the video is no longer available, you know, that's which what is happens. false. That's, that's it's always just um, what happens, you know, when you, yeah, well, hold on, we'll you're see. an asshole. It's always this guy. Always this guy. Don't get it. Well, don't ask us anything. <laughs> Hold can, off on can that. You, can you get it right oh, now? I Pippa? got it. You got it? It's in, you see my, my stupid head moving? Oh, I see it, bro. Oh, but it's just me. I no, also... it's... I, I can't get it either. Peter M. Pino. No, it's the Peter M. Pino, not That's Peter what I'm Pino. On. Yeah. I got nothing. Well, I shared it to my page. All right. Paul Riddell. Yeah, you'd think, right, just how long we've been doing this. <laughs> That's something like just finding it on Facebook would be easier. Wow. And we are also copying the link to the Getting Sports with Drunk page. Uh, and I don't see it on yours either. I, I don't. I, I shared it to mine, and now I'm trying to view it on mine. That's, I'm having unreal, stupid technology. Da 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 da. da. Well, it says we're up. The, the, the clock is moving. Yeah. So. Anyway. <laughs> let's get out of that good stuff that you guys all come here to, <laughs> that to listen good, to. That good, good. good. Y- yeah. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. E- E-40. We mm. got to do, uh, what, the uh, the Riddler rankings. That's right. Riddler's rankings. Coming to you live and direct. I still think it's yeah. weird being on this side of the table. I've never actually seen the screens <laughs> from this angle. Hello. So, <laughs> this is Jeff. <laughs> Yeah, read those rankings. <laughs> <laughs> Red Baron. Today's Riddler's rankings are the sixth, I can never say it, sixth men, men of our generation. Six men. Six men. Well, before we get into it, a shout out to your the grandfather, your <laughs> great grandfather. <laughs> before we uh, we get in, ooh, Mike Mark sharing the video, which means he's, he's recovering well in the hospital. <laughs> oh, Good yeah. For him. Mike Mock, if you are in fact listening, we we commend you on your your heroism for pulling that that. Well, actually, it looks like if you go into our <laughs> inbox, <laughs> Donald Trump actually requested to meet with. Oh no, he's canceling <laughs> the meeting. Get out of my seat, Jeff. <laughs> Peter Pino, it's public and and ready to go. Move on, damn it. <laughs> We're gonna talk about this as long as we can. People come to hear us talk about Facebook Live. Um, so live. Before, <laughs> well, I, I, I still can't fucking into, find uh, it. <laughs> before we get into the rankings, uh, we do a shout out to the only sixth man that matters, Bobby Jones. That's right, the goat of all sixth men, the first ever sixth man, the only thing the Sixers have ever done right. Hold on, uh, keep talking. I'm gonna try to get a picture up <laughs> of what Bobby Jones. <laughs> There's um, one thing. So the five best. So for me, there's a lot of good guys that have come off the bench and have made very strong impacts. Um. But in order to be considered in the the list, I feel like you had to have won sixth man of the year. I agree. I just feel like that's fair. Um, so the one honorable mention I'm gonna do is, is uh, the sixth man award. We generally see to somebody that either fills that sixth man role very well for their career, um, and you know flirts with being a starter and the first guy off the bench type of deal. <laughs> and then we also see the type of person who is. Um, was more stardom starter type of player and gradually worked their way towards the bench and became that sixth man type of guy. Um, but the the one guy that actually kind of did it the right way, honorable mention, started off as the sixth man and turned out to be a stud, and that is James Harden. Won sixth yeah. man of the year award when he was in the Thunder. Look at him now. Pre-beard? Baby beard. 
Baby beard. So I can't find it, but but Bobby Jones blocked Jordan, and there's a picture of it, and it's fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> but I I can't find it. So then onto the list, number five. Most notably known for playing in Phoenix, the Brazilian speedster Leandro Barbosa. Oh, good um, pick. He's just you know. <laughs> he, he's, <laughs> He was extremely fast. Um, he had okay handles. He had an okay shot. He he was able to cut in the lane. He was a little undersized and very scrawny. So he was able to maneuver in between the slower paced big men of the time. Now all big men are a lot more athletic. Um, I don't really know how well Barbosa would do in today's NBA versus a decade ago. You'd be surprised. No. Um, <laughs> what a great name too, uh, Leandro Barbosa. Barbosa. <laughs> um, but he was just, he was always just a good serviceable guy, especially for for that Phoenix team. He definitely did not warrant a start over all the stars that they had. So he filled that sixth role very well. Number four, most notably known for his tenure with the Chicago Bulls, Ben Gordon. All right. All right. Another guy that Ben Gordon was kind of like that fringe starter dude. He would start a lot of games and he would come off the bench for games, but he was always more explosive off the bench. Um, he was the first ever rookie sixth man of the year, I believe. Might be the only one. JMR, do you know? Can we confirm that? Do you know? He won six man as a rookie. I know that because he was the first one to ever do it, but I don't think anyone else has done it since. Mm, not that I'm it's aware kinda of. It kind of seems like really since the Le- LeBron Wade Mellow draft, a lot of these guys either come out and they get like 10 minutes or they're starters. Right. So he might be the only guy to still do it. I'm not sure. I would have to check that. But, um,. He was just the guy had a lights out shot, one of the highest arcing shots oh, yeah. I've ever seen. I it mean, was the, beautiful. It was it was just a stroke of just genius. <laughs> and I give up. But he was also just he was for a, an undersized two. He was very explosive. He had some pretty mean dunks, and just very athletic. Very you know got into some real a lot bad of big shots after too. he went to Detroit. Um, <laughs> but yeah, a lot of big shots was a, he was part of a very one of the most underrated backcourts too of that time between him and Heinrich. Captain Kirk. True. Very clutch. Captain Kirk was very clutch, had a real good three, and defensively locked down. And Ben Gordon was quick. He was good off the screen, had a lights-out jumper. It was a good backcourt. Number three. Most notably known for his time with the Dallas Mavericks. Jason Terry. The Jet. Jason Terry, just like Ben Gordon, he did do a lot of starting. Um, he was on that team, that the Mavericks, that won the, when he won a ring, right? He was part of that team still? I think so. I believe he was. Um, he was al- he was also part of the the good Maverick squad that lost to the Heat actually in 06. Yeah. Anyway, he was just one of those, he he was always better off the bench than he was as a starter. Mm-hmm. If he went out there as a starter and he he would give you 14 points or, or 18 points something like that, which is fine. Yeah, that you know. But when he'd come off the bench, like he he would just he'd come off and in a three minute spurt he'd put up three threes. He'd get a steal. You know, randomly a block, maybe two rebounds. Like he was just he was such a good player off the bench. So good. Number two, Manu Ginobili. All right. Um, again, another guy that you know has done the starter thing with the Popovich system, but Manu Ginobili was just that guy that he he was a, a bench player because they really up until recently they kind of always lacked a real star in the middle of the lineup. They had Duncan down low, and then they had Parker up at the top. And then the middle guys were always kind of filling in the gaps and playing minutes. And, and Popovich is always very creative in what he did with his bench. So for Ginobili, he would come off and he would a little bit different than the traditional six man. He would play more minutes, but he would when he came off the bench, he was getting something within the first thirty seconds. The first thirty seconds, he was getting some big play. He was blocking oh, yeah. a superstar. He was getting a steal. He was driving in and dunking it. He was hitting some fadeaway Balding. over a center. Hmm? Balding. <laughs> Balding. <laughs> Balding. And then number one, probably the greatest sixth man of all time, Jamal Crawford. Come on, That's get, get me it. doing the J crossover. <laughs> just still magical to this day. This guy's got insane. It's mesmerizing yeah, some of the shit got, he does. He's got insane 30, handles. 37, 38. Baldman. Um, he, the, he's lanky as hell. He is so long. Sun's coming up soon. I forgot how I think he's like 15 or 16. Oh, man. That's awesome. But he's... Yikes. He's just so good. I can only hope because I'm going to miss Crawford when he's done. Yeah, he's he's one of those players that's just like... He's never on people's radar for greatest player of all time or anything like that because he's not. 
but he's just he's probably the most serviceable player yeah, that we've ever seen. He's electric. He's so good. And he he's the only guy to win the sixth man of the year three times. Some of the nicest wow. layups you'll ever see. Yeah. Sounds funny saying <laughs> that, but oh my god. Just footwork. Uh oh. Live from Burger King, the man of many names, <laughs> Souls is tuned in. Get back to work, Souls. So there you go. I say we stop there because <laughs> we got time before two before we get a not order anything, just harass him. Oh, yeah. <laughs> just complain to management. <laughs> just order a Pepsi. Pepsi. Order a Pepsi and a McDouble. Ooh, I like that. Or bring a Mountain Dew and just pour it out in front of them. Uh, what do you think of that, Sills? Park the front of your car on the mat in front of the drive through <laughs> window so that the time doesn't reset. Yeah, <laughs> yeah we're going to ruin your time today, Kyle. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I don't know. Just that they, Sills, if you're still listening, we did a, the Riddler's Rankings. Uh, five best sixth men of our generation. Yes, we shouted out Bobby Jones. Looking through the sixth uh, men, I I tend to agree with everything. Yeah, so the list was as followed. Five to one, Leandro Barbosa, Ben Gordon, Jason Terry, Manu Ginobili, Jamal Crawford. So you I know, hope, if, there's, I if there's one, I'd say Lou Williams made a case. I don't I don't know about Eric Gordon either. It, he, the whole there's a big discrepancy nowadays with what six man really is. Right, and that's in minute wise, like Gordon and Lou Williams, they're almost starters. They're getting starter minutes in some games. For me, I put so like for me like Eric Gordon, he he's a Ben he's a sixth man, but that's just because the two people that play the positions he'd be playing are far better than him. And and like he started a good amount of the year too. When, yeah, when Chris Paul. Like, for me, like. Like, Manu absolutely could have been a starter. Yeah. But, like I said, one, you have Popovich, who's so good at putting the right lineup at the floor at all times. Yep. But they had Parker and Duncan, who were the anchors in the starting lineup, and all the <coughs> people that were in between. Oh, that's some depth. The people that were in between were, like, everybody was a role player outside of those two guys. Yeah. Some games, Ginobili got 32 minutes. Other games, Ginobili got 15 minutes. But whenever he was out there, he, he was the putting most. in the work. If he, if he was going to get you 15 minutes and he was going to get you 10 points and three blocks in 30 minutes he'll get you 20 points and six blocks like he, he just the guy is just so good <laughs> yes you know it's funny whenever we do the, the simming in uh 2k how uh joe kim Noah is always the the, the winner the six man uh, yeah always it doesn't make any sense uh, you know why say his name <laughs> 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 I think it's just because like, he's still terrible on offense in the game, but they keep his defensive ratings. Like, it's weird. His defensive rating has, like, dropped to, like, a C, but he still has, like, a 92 block and, like, a 90 rebounding. And it's like, I, it's like the game puts so much – I think this is why the stat exists for the game. So that the creators of it, when they make these players, like, oh, man, this guy can still block shots left and right. Like Dwight Howard, for example. Dwight, Dwight Howard still has the ability to block shots every which way and get tons of rebounds. But he's not what he used to be. Oh, you know what we'll do? Let's create a defensive awareness category. <laughs> It'll be worth 50% of your overall grade. So what we'll do is we'll just drop that six points. It'll drop him from a B to a C, but we can keep his block and rebounding up. Perfect. Because anytime you create a player in 2K, it's, it's, it's like block, yeah. block 99... Rebounding 99, steal 99, three-point shooting 99, dunk 99. Okay, as of right now, your guy is going to be like a 78. Offense awareness, defensive awareness, and speed 99s, your guy's a 1,000. I've never seen so many games put so much emphasis on speed. Because speed kills. That call to the bullpen, <laughs> sponsored by Narragansett. <laughs> by who? Natagasserit with oh. their Dells or Deals. Deals. Natagasserit Deals Shande. I drank way too many of those one time mm. and booted in a pool. That's awesome. Mm-hmm. Into my bag of tricks here. <laughs> I have another cold one. <laughs> Found it. <laughs> the others are warm. <laughs> That's the best thing. Is like Kendall's like, I'm not going to be bothered with getting up to get one out of the fridge. I'm going to let whatever, whatever coldness transfers no, from no, one I to the other. I that I just had to get up, so I, I agree. You know, Natty Gasser put out a variety pack called the Clam Shack. Pretty good deal. Kyle, you still tuned in, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, no, you're a big fan of that. <laughs> three three Natagasserits, three uh, three of the Deals Chandays, mm. three of the uh, Betch Towns Ippas, and uh, three of the uh, Fresh Catch Golden Lagers. Nice. You know, when a uh, big lobster on the can. 
I had stopped uh, at Kyle's. Uh, someone recently had to help him move something, and his father tried to uh, pawn some clams on me before I left. <laughs> <laughs> you want some of these, boy? <laughs> Raw clams too. <laughs> like, what am I going to put in the trunk? Like, <laughs> yeah, just got a, a trunk of clams here. You guys trying to do a raw oyster bar? Pop the trunk like a 2004 hip hop music video, <laughs> but instead of speakers, it's just it's just raw it's shellfish. Booted. That'd be good. That'd be good. I'd like to enjoy that with Jason Taylor. Hey, now that's a business idea. A mobile raw bar sounds, sounds like a lot. Sounds, sounds, sounds like you get really high insurance. Yeah. Jmart would eat from raw that though. Bar. Hey, we have the opportunity this coming weekend it, when we go, when, when we go to the Phillies game. We're making a special trip out of the way. To go to our rite of passage, Sheets. Sheets. Yeah, we, we should. And See, Jamer, you have the opportunity because Sheets has introduced gas station sushi. You're going to get it. You're going to try flirting it. with disaster. Yeah, but I mean, everything you get from there gives you diarrhea, so it's... <laughs> yeah, but this will give you salmonella. <laughs> <laughs> Which just gives you more diarrhea. So or, it's really, or it's just, worse. All you're doing is creating a middleman of diarrhea. Yeah. My stomach hurts just thinking about <laughs> wh- what that's going to be. According to Mokshin Washable, too, some locations serve beer now. So Serve so. beer like... like Forget the game. Like yeah. on tap? Well, no, I just like coolers. But that'd be awesome. Go to the counter. Yeah, can I get a... <laughs> <laughs> can I get seven of these <laughs> and then an order of mood sticks? <laughs> Seven moosics? No, no, no. Seven beers. <laughs> and our lids, if you got them. <laughs> These aren't all for you guys, right? <laughs> no, no. We're buying for the row. <laughs> <laughs> uh, should we do that? Should we buy our row beers? See, uh, No, because they're Phillies fans. <laughs> so expensive. <laughs> <laughs> what if we buy, like, one random... Oh, I didn't know this. We should do that. We should buy one random person of beer. Let's make it someone that looks like they don't drink. Oh yeah, hey, hey, hey this is yours. <laughs> Just hand it to him. I didn't know this. Watch him Usually, I get. I would. I feel like this would be included into the group text. Jeff, we have a question for you. Uh oh. Yo, how come I can't pull this up? Mellow. <laughs> oh, is this Kyle? No, 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 no. This is no. I found this in. Uh, this popped up on my newsfeed. So Mellow has chosen not to opt out, and will be earning his uh, twenty-eight million. <laughs> twenty-eight million for the Thunder. Do you think the Thunder wave him? I I think it'd be a really, really, really bad idea to wave him, only because that's a lot of money to just take that hit from, you know. And it's not like losing Melo doesn't give you an advantage. It does give you a play. Melo's not going to be New York Knicks Melo. No. He's not, but I think he's going to be better without George there. He'll, He'll definitely, because... Again, you look at him as a Nick, and I hate to bring up the Knicks' past, but as the number one scorer, he's good. He's a good player on that side of the ball. Yes, he slows the tempo down, but when you have Russell Westbrook there, that could actually be a good thing. He slows it down. Then you have Russell, who's in your face with running down the court. You know, it's a it's going to be a nice balance of tempos. Kyle says Melo sucks. Kyle is is a Sixers fan, and they could trust the process all they want, um, but when it's completed, then he can talk. And that's coming from a guy that's just miserable and watches my team lose for 20 years. But back to Mello. And Kyle, Kyle, you irrelevant fuck. Kyle also says King Knox. I want to know why Kyle's not here if he could sit there at work and uh, interrupt me. King Knox. We'll I'll see what he says. Nice nice draft night, Kyle. Um, <laughs> anyway. Yeah, I don't, I think, you know, as Mello, you know, you got you to gotta stay in your contract. You're not going to get... 10% of what you're making right now. It's a stupid contract to be in. But as a Thunder, you're, in a way, stuck with him. But make the most of it. He's he's still a proven talent in the league. You have other pieces. I, I don't know how they win moving forward. I really don't. Because, to me, I don't know what the hell the front office was doing. They built up this, like, really top-heavy roster. And there's pieces. Steven Adams is the most underrated player in the NBA. Most underappreciated player in the NBA. You've got Grant, who's a great athletic talent, who could be good on the defensive end to make up for kind of Mello not being defensive minded. I, just keep building. How old is Mello going to be now? Thirty, what, two or three? Thirty-three, thirty-four. Pretty much whatever LeBron and Wade are. <laughs> well, no, whatever Wade is. LeBron, what what Mello needs to do is just play his game, 
but he needs to also maybe look to pass more. He shot a pretty bad percentage. And, you know, but that Westbrook did too. It's not – everyone is quick on Melo, but it's it's got to be tough playing with Westbrook in the sense that he commands the ball, and that's what Melo does. So they're, they're the same mindset. It could kind of be a chemistry issue. But, I mean, get paid. That That's what this yeah. is about. This is more than basketball. This is get paid for Melo. Yeah. Um, I think it was a, if it was like a $5 million thing he could opt into, he'd be out. But he's got, you know, a better chance winning in Oklahoma than he does with New York, which is probably why also he's still there. But, I mean, 28 million reasons to stay. I was kind of hoping he'd opt out and go to Chicago. Yeah. Just start bouncing around the league. You know, I, I want to see him win a ring, but I was reading this thing, and I we were, t- you know, I was making all the jokes about the Bulls doing all these draft trades and everything yeah. when we were doing the mock draft. But I was reading this thing the day before the draft about like some trade options that nobody's talking about that could happen or whatever. And it was, it essentially there was other pieces involved, but it, it essentially was the Bulls trading away the eighth pick to the Thunder for Stephen Adams. And I would have been so excited. Uh, you should be. I mean, we had a great draft, I think. Literally but, so underrated. But he's the, I feel like he's the perfect guy for this Chicago team because Markinen, much like what the Celtics kind of had going on, Markinen, we didn't get to see the full extent, in my opinion, of what Markinen can do because there was a lot of games where he had to play down low a lot. Yeah. And, like, for Porzingis, it's different because Porzingis is so tall and so meaty. Like, he's, he's a thicker guy. Markinen's, now he is. Right, when he first came out he was. But Markinen's a little bit lanky, although he's been putting on weight the offseason. Apparently he recreated the hangover the other night, which was hilarious. <laughs> um, but, um, you know, as like a you know, 6'8 finish dude. 6'10 <laughs> um, probably, I don't even know. But uh, we want Steven Kansas. But I just feel like like with Horford, same thing. Horford's game, even though he's older, it really got hindered because they didn't have that big man. And Horford's a guy that can step out and shoot the three and stretch yeah. the floor. So when you when Horford's kind of locked down to inside to the wings, it really just kind of hurts the team as a whole. And Stephen Adams, he's young, which is what the Bulls are doing. And it's just a defensive guy. Great mustache. Uh, I just want to, you know. Kendall still thinks it's Adam Morrison. He's a great teammate, too. It is. It yeah. is. In fact, they even have the same name. It's it's the same person. Stephen Morrison. Yeah. <laughs> Go look it up. Adam Adams. Adam Adams. <laughs> you kids get on there, your Google images, you check that out. <laughs> Google no, images. Mello thing stresses me out still. Yeah. <laughs> it's just like a whole how many years he was on the Knicks and we couldn't just do anything. I look back to one of the most loaded teams we had with him and Stoudemire in their prime, and we couldn't get out of the fucking first round. Chauncey Billups. We've had we've had pieces. It's just never amounted to anything. And what's sad, and this is why I'm going to say Carmelo Anthony is not going to ever win a ring, and it's just sucks. He couldn't do it in the East when all he had was one team to beat, and he never even got to play LeBron in a yep. playoff game. Yep. There's no way you're surviving in the West. I Even mean, with Russell Westbrook. The thing is, is if he can stay healthy, as long as he can stay healthy, he's because he has really molded as he got older. He w- He's done a, one of the best jobs we've seen in a long time of turning the, you know, because the Nuggets mellow was an absolute problem when he decided to drive the lane or go down mm-hmm. low. He was an absolute problem to try to defend. When Mello went to the Knicks, that problem started to go away because he just wasn't as quick. But he developed an amazing turnaround. He developed an amazing back down. At least while he was in New York, was the best one-on-one player in the NBA. Oh, yeah. And he developed a really good three-point shot. And if Melo can just keep working on those things, there's the potential he lands, you know, a little bit later down the line. Because right now I still think he's got too much talent to be a guy that's going to sell out for, you know, a bench spot. But a little bit down the line, if he wants to just keep playing and taking a veteran minimum contract type of deal... He might find himself on a team that just needs somebody to come off the bench, give him 10 minutes that can shoot. I just never see him coming off the bench, even if he should be, just because of who he is. And it's going to drive a lot of teams away from – like, I mean, it's – I thought it was weird that the Thunder were the ones that picked him up to begin with. I think they wanted but, to jump with the opportunity, like, hey, yeah. we, we can be a Golden State. Let's just add this, this. – Yeah, and it, but the Melo, you know, it's funny that he said it after the season. I kind of thought that was – you know, not to shit on him too much, but I thought that was kind of a bullshit move. You know, like you played the whole year, now you're going to voice your opinion. Yeah. He said that they didn't have a plan bringing him in there. Everyone knew that, but like, why did you wait till after the season to say that? 
Because, I mean, they, you just got two small forwards. Melo isn't that good of a four. Because when you ask him to rebound and ask him to do what he did last year, you see what happens to his scoring. And and everyone's going to say, oh, the worst numbers. But, I mean, you asked him to do this. Yeah. It's going to diminish some of that. He's an older player. Yeah. That's what, you know. Can't have your cake and eat I it, too. Get the That's right. <laughs> And I mean, he had—he's always been a like average rebounder for a scorer. I, don't know. I hope we see more summer hoodie mellow. <laughs> it already started, I believe, unless it was a bogus thing I saw. Oh, good. good. It, you know, honestly, it was probably just somebody posting one from last year saying he added again. It's <laughs> probably what it was. He I didn't added really again. look into it. Uh, while we're on the 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 Jmart favorite player train, we'll stay on it a little bit more positive note. Dontrell Willis. Did you see Peyton Manning's oh. interview? No, I didn't. Ooh. Oh, yeah, yeah, with Drew Brees. says, nobody deserves to own the passing record more than Drew Brees. Very classy move. I like that. I didn't it see that. It's, I think it's true. I mean, you you look at Drew Brees. Last year was the first year he's had a Pro Bowl co- uh, wide receiver in his yep. career. Which is just insane. I mean, like, it, it just blows my mind for somebody that puts oh, up yeah. that many. I mean, yes, ball distribution. But at the end of the day, you put up those kinds of numbers, it's bound to make one receiver look really good he made jimmy graham and as talented as jimmy graham could be he made jimmy graham and i honestly like i th- i think one of the biggest in our generation one of the you know i mean I know the pro bowl's a joke whatever blah 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 but i think one of the biggest pro bowl snubs in our generation is that colson never got a pro bowl yep. bid yep you know it's crazy you not even not even as a replacement for somebody that, that backed out or was shit, injured though after <laughs> that stupid lateral <laughs> Think of all those receivers that kind of went into, like, obscurity. You know, Devery Henderson, you know, Meacham. Lance Moore. Moore. Lance Moore. He was a stealer. I think uh, they recently inducted most of the guys. We listen, I don't think Meacham. But <laughs> I think they just put him in the Saints Hall of Fame, too. I know Moore, definitely. I think Henderson, too. So Moore, Moore had, like, a couple 10-touchdown seasons. Yeah. And no one, no one knew no, that because yeah, yeah. he was just kind of an under-the-radar guy. But I think it's going to come down to health. And, I mean – I don't want to say anything about Drew Brees' health because I don't want to jinx it. Hey, knock on whatsoever. that wood right there. But you can always have Chris if he stays <laughs> healthy, I, I see him as a more durable player than Brady. I think size has a lot to do with it when you're a smaller guy. He's, he's more you know evasive. I'm not going to yeah. say elusive, but he's evasive. He avoids – oh, God, I'm getting him hurt this year. <laughs> he avoids the injury. No, I, I know what he's you're saying. He's not getting hurt unless you draft him in fantasy. Right. I won't do – well, I did it actually. He's the one guy that beat the Madden curse and beat my fantasy curse. But, uh, I mean, Brady, I see, you know, he's had injuries. Brady's he's hurt injuries every year. Were minor. So, I mean, it's it's really tough because one of those guys is going to walk away with just about maybe all three passing records. We could say that. Uh, I just don't want it to be Brady. I don't either. And I think Breeze should get the yardage. He should. Just, I mean, he's always thrown. It's funny. Last year he didn't throw for as many yards. He still had a great season, but it's because we have a a newfound running game. But I think he's going to be asked to throw the ball for at least the first four weeks. Yeah. With just one running back. Unless somebody steps up. Unless they throw throw to Alvin. Have him. I mean, he he can catch. Should be interesting. Thank you, Peyton. (laughs) Is there a contingency? Oh, my God. Contingency plan? Um at running back? Well, we drafted, um, oh, I think his last name was Boston. David Boston? No. no Junior? No. We drafted a running back. He was supposed to uh, be like a return man type deal, but I'm sure he's going to get, you know, some opportunities. <laughs> and I know, I believe we still have Cadet. There's a couple guys on the depth chart. Oh, it's actually, gonna be I forgot about It's going to be very heavily based off of Kamara, obviously. Uh, but we, we'll probably see a more pass-heavy start. Yeah. Well, I mean, you got the perfect guy in the backfield, you know, just with a little swing routes and all that. I always thought they should try more Mike Will- uh, ah, some of the the run plays. What are they called? The wide receiver reverse. There ah, we- there. Because he's quick. Yeah. Well, he's got that BC vision, you know. That's Where right. Are- That's right. And now we have Ben Watson back. Big bad Ben Watson. What's sad is he's so much older, but he's already an upgrade over Fleener. <laughs> Fleener what busted a, out. I thought he was gonna be. I thought he was gonna be like Peyton Manning and Dallas Clark. That good. I, I was excited. I, I talked it up. Dropped everything. Didn't get open. And he's got a stupid face. Mm. Yeah. I could let all go, but he makes that stupid face. <laughs> Did you see the uh, a little bit lighter news? <laughs> Just funnier. Did you see the thing that the the current dispute between um 
the the Chiefs and um, the NFL. No. So uh, the right guard, not probably not a household name, but um, Lornette, uh, it's like Duvernay Tardif or something like that. Oh, I, I know. He that plays name. right guard for the Chiefs. Um, he just recently completed his MD. And he wants oh, yeah, to put yeah. MD on the back of his jersey. Oh, and the they, NFL won't let they him do should it. let him do that. Come on, what it's opening asshole. up some of the greatest. It's it's opening up somebody to finally compete for greatest pregame intros besides Jared Allen. <laughs> he yeah. <had> the best. <laughs> Jared Allen, Culinary Institute of America. <laughs> if they let him do it, you know those things the doctors wear with like the reflective. <laughs> it is his player card pictures. Just be that. Also, one Riddler might be swearing off football forever. Why? Because right now the big buzz in the NFL is that Terrell Owens is making a big push to sign with Green Bay. Oh, oh really? Yep. Ah, oh, he wouldn't that uh, as a player. Yeah, as a receiver. Oh God, Rogers. He's gonna get hurt. Ah. Oh. No, he won't, because it's Rodgers. He'll come out. He, I, if He'll get he, hurt. If he plays with Rodgers, he's, he's going to the Pro Bowl. Well, you know what? With all these new rules, he probably won't even ever. Well, <laughs> it's hard to get hurt in flag football. Yeah. That's <laughs> what you guys, we're watching. Did you guys also see Baker Mayfield going on um, the Colin Coward yes. show? Yes. Because Colin Coward called him undraftable before the yeah. draft. So he went on there with a, a Baker Mayfield undraftable hoodie on the Colin Coward show. <laughs> I'm I'm a fan of Mayfield. I think I think I want to see him play in the NFL before I make that. But uh, because everyone's kind of calling him Johnny Manziel round two, but I I think he's nowhere near Johnny Manziel. I think he's talent wise, he's better. I think I think he, people just look for like to to make those. Yeah, because he has that stupid you know that one incident he was involved in where the police tag because he ran from the police, and that's gonna haunt him. Yeah, well, and people. Th- they won't admit it, but they're they're in love with Manziel. They 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 yeah. they, 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 they the want fact that. that we're talking about him and he hasn't played is it's no. like everyone. No one would be mad if he came back. And the people that say that they're oh no this guy sucks, they're gonna watch him. Yeah. So do you really hate him or are you like what what's the real story there? I've tried to catch some CFL games, but they're like on Saturday night. And... Yeah, he was an exciting <laughs> player, and you know controversy aside, that's what I mean. All these people that hate all these guys and have to make it vocal that they're. They hate and don't want to see him on a team. I won't say Kaepernick because that's a whole different debate and argument. But, like, you, why are you following him still then? Yeah. You know? It's interesting. Kaepernick. Also, oh, God. We're, gonna, uh, we're getting close to, to cutoff time, but we haven't talked about Jameis Winston. Yeah. yeah forgot, forgot all about that. Suspended three games. For uh, I think it was three games for violating the uh, personal conduct policy, grabbing an Uber driver's crotch, yep. female Uber driver's crotch. Good for him. Yeah. <laughs> that makes Terrible. me a happy man. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to see him. <laughs> <laughs> Can't stand him. <clears throat> I know. Uh, it's not I don't even hypocritical because I don't want to ever watch the Bucks. They just yeah. Well, just another typical. It's a bonehead move. Yeah. But um. In general, I don't think he has the lasting power anyway. So if he has another good season... He looks just like Josh Freeman did to me. The same... Literally, I know it's the same team too, but it... Oh, he's going to be great. And where is that? Yeah. I know he's still young. He's got a lot of... But, no, you know. Can only rely on Mike Evans, you know... Yeah, that's what I mean. They got, so long. It's He needs a better team around him. Here's another good I don't want that. for debate for the NFL season. Um, what do you guys think about... Um, down here, Cam Newton? <laughs> yes. What do you guys think about... Oh, did you see the video of him with the fan? No. Oh, was so oh, was that a kid, right? Yeah, some kid was, like, about, like, fumbling in the Super Bowl or something. <laughs> oh, like that kid oh. his face. Um, so, we all know that there's been some irregularities and inconsistency in the officiating of NFL games yep. and all that. But what are you guys expecting to see this season? Because the NFL has a serious ref problem on their hands. I um, see little to no change. They ju- well, they just had their fourth head official retire. So we're talking like big official. Now we're not talking like a side judge. We're talking like a, a, a game calling official. And the fourth one gone, which means we're going to see some of these veteran guys that have been doing the other ref jobs coming up. But essentially, it doesn't matter where. Somewhere along the line, there's going to be rookie refs. Yeah. And do you think this? Do you think it's going to? You think it's good? Do you think it's good that we're moving on from this set of refs and the new refs, or do you think it's going to cause issues? Well, I 
both. It's going to cause issues for sure because it's an experience. But there, there has to be that turning point. They can't, they can't ref forever. Well, no, no, no. I know what I'm saying. But like, do you think this set of refs is the reason we're having all these issues with no calls or inconsistent pass interference? I mean, because PI calls and holding calls are probably the biggest things. We have it's it's inconsistent, not even from game to game, from play to play. I mean, you'll see someone grab someone's jersey and the flag won't get thrown, but then you'll see them nudge them going up for the catch, yeah. and it's a pass interference call. I mean, there's no black and white. As much as there, I'd love there to be, and every fan, I think, would love there to be, this is pass interference and this isn't, it, you can't. It now, is a judgment call. Now, how many times have they said this? But this is the year. It's supposed to be all squared away. We got it. It's, yeah, it's worked ass. out now. So I, I'd be curious, especially like you said, with new new officials, if it's kind of been you know drilled into their head, you know, hey, this is the call you have to make. You make it every time. You know, no ifs, ands, or buts. I got a, a weird theory that I think would solve a lot of officiating issues. Maybe not so much put a mask on the referee, but we don't need to know their name. We don't need to know who they are. We don't need to know their personality. They're there to officiate, yeah. Not take up camera time. There's, they make it about them. That's what I feel like the main issue is. And I don't know how you solve that, but self-officiated games. <laughs> that would the s- honor system. That would be hilarious. <laughs> but or you, here's another thing. I mean, it would never work. But you want some real consistency? Start playing. Uh, do a 9 a.m. game and an 8 p.m. game oh. every day of the week, uh, and just the same officiating crew going from stadium to stadium. <laughs> And that's eh, not the You'd worst. You'd be so tired. The, official, yeah. the, the, the NFL officials, they would be, they'd just be dead. But they'd that's what I mean. Like, if, if they can make it less about, hey, I'm on TV with this holding call and my biceps. What the fuck is his name? And Hockey League. <laughs> hey, that guy is hilarious. It's, no, it's not, it's not even him, but there's like. Holding the entire offensive <laughs> line. There's the human element, which is a good thing, but it's also, you know, has its, its bad side. They just make it more about football, not, not no. you. Go with the flow of the game. You know, if people are pushing and shoving all game, yeah, throw a flag. Well, it was like the game if last uh, uh, last year with the the index card to determine a first I, down. I, I've yeah. never uh, seen that, it. That was amazing. It's a, I guess that's in the rule book. That's the other thing. We need to be more upfront and no transparency. I mean, I get God, it. I sound like I'm at fucking the dealership in a meeting <laughs> right now. I mean, I get it, though. Like, if like a lot of people had discrepancies with that call. I, I personally didn't have any issue with it. I no. mean, it, if it's too close for the naked eye to determine – you, you slide the index card in. If it, if yeah. the football moves, then it's obviously touching. It would be touching the marker, mm-hmm. and you're good. Well, it's funny, too. If they didn't do the index card, which everyone bitched about the index card, if they didn't do it, no matter what the call, people are always going to yeah. bitch. You you know, it's bitches. interesting to go back and watch old games from the, the 70s when there's, there's no, the yellow line doesn't exist. Yeah. And you just watch it, and it pops up on the screen. Oh, it's third and ten. And then the disappears, the play commences, and then you just wait until the, the TV announces. <laughs> Did he get it? <laughs> yeah. They have to send the pigeon out with the answer. <laughs> he made it. <laughs> the pigeon. Oh, that's Rich Martin. It's that's just rich. like these people want no, everything rich. perfect, so they're going to go to robots, like especially with baseball. And then, who's gonna fucking watch it at that point? Yeah, it's like the, sports shouldn't be messed with. Yeah, that's the best thing I could say. Fuckers, <laughs> 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 just stop fucking with sports. Leave politics out of it. Let's make it about sports yeah. again. Make America sports again. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> New head of officiating right here. Holdings legal. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to interfere? Fine. All right. <laughs> but don't rough that kicker. Nope. Maybe the punter. Not the kicker. It's going to be coming up on the anniversary of an uh, Antonio Brown uh, curb stopping that oh, uh, man. poor punter. Can't even remember his name. <sighs> that was rough. <laughs> That's uh, the lowest of the lows for a punter's career. The most hilarious thing, yeah. and you know, he, he says this was an accident, but he full well intended to jump over him and didn't. So, I don't know. It Hilarious. is what it is. Yeah. It happened, and it, it it was the Browns, and just it's yeah. it's, it's, it's poetic <laughs> at that point. That was the whole season. Yeah, that's what two years, two years now that that happened. I believe so. I think it's two years. So, well, a party on the show. We'll uh, we'll recreate <laughs> we'll, it with we'll, uh, we'll Kyle and Mike keep kicking <laughs> each other. <laughs> oh man! Also, uh. 
June twenty seventh is right around the corner, and we're gonna repost uh, an article oh. I wrote. Oh uh, yes, uh, Houston <laughs> well, great athletes. What's that? The day after? Uh, it's oh, Wednesday, no, I think. No, it's Wednesday. 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 I gotta go okay. shopping for some uh, <laughs> purple some drink. Purple drink. Um, how do you guys feel too? Real quick before you run time, how do you feel about the new kickoff rules? Actually, I'm not even familiar. Just <sighs> stop changing shit. <laughs> well, they kind of so they some they did some weird stuff, but they kind of opened it up a little bit. So the new rules are as follows. Um, this one's kind of like dumb. I get it for the injury purposes, but it's just no more running starts for the for the kicking team. <laughs> so the kickoffs from the 35 it, yard it's line. A fucking joke. Just don't the even kick from the, the, the ball. 11 or from the 11 yard line. The kickoff is from the 35 yard line. And usually the 10 people that are not the kicker are usually lined up at the 30 and start running up, and then they cross the 35-yard line when the ball's kicked. You have to start from a dead stop at the 35-yard line now. Also, um, they changed it now where eight on the receiving team, eight of your 11 players have to be lined up within the fifth, that 15-yard box from the kickoff, meaning that downfield you can only have a receiver and two blockers. Which, for me, honestly, like, it's a rule. It's one of those things that's like, ah, do you really need to make that rule? Like, no. Like, just let people – if somebody wants to line up with all 11 down the field, let them do it. But it's going to be interesting to open them up because I mean, just, there's a, it just means that everybody's going to get a lot down the field a lot slower. Yeah. It's going to open up the room. And then the last one is there's no blocking within the first 15 yards. So kick returns will be a lot more like punt returns. I, I'd be curious, but like J.M.R. said, I just just leave it alone. I mean, Everything is so player safety. Do, do you safety. remember? You're paying. I don't know. It was a couple years back. They they got rid of you, the three man wedge. That's out. Yep. You, you can't can't link arms. You get two man. You know that's the limit for the wedge. I mean, come on. It's fucking Football. Stupid. Football is. You should be able to lead with the crown of your helmet. A sham. Well, my only thing. Contact sport. I understand player safety, but um. You know, there's a thing called hazard pay. A lot of jobs offer you more money. You're making how many millions? A lot of money. Yeah, you're going to get a concussion or 12 <laughs> for that much money. That's your choice. <laughs> a concussion or 12. Rest in peace, Elson Collie. <laughs> I mean, they're effectively, I think every time of the discussion, you know, let's get rid of the kickoff. I mean, by doing that for player safety, you're, you're nullifying – Great people like Devin Hester. Yeah. All those records like mean nothing now. Let's say, well, Devin Hester would be happy if they got rid of it, because then there will be no. Well, in no case the record will ever be broken, but uh... that's not true. Well, that's not true. What do you mean? Well, Devin Hester broke the return record, but he broke it from Deion Sanders, who had an insurmountable amount of interception return no. touchdowns. Well, we were talking about if they got rid of the kickoff, that no one would be able to touch his record again. <laughs> one good cornerback, uh, pick sixes. All he needs another Matt Schwab in the league, and someone can do it. <laughs> Remember that period of time? Pick six Very like unlikely, but it could be broken. I mean, because it's, it's a return it's touchdown. True, that's true. That's true. If you get, like somebody, you get somebody like a Luke Keekley, somebody who can pick off the ball and can recover fumbles. But a kickoff return record will never be touched. The kickoff return record won't. Yes. Or punt. Right? He was I don't punt. Know. He was the, I, I don't know if he holds the kickoff return record. Why do we punt the ball? Then? I know he holds the punt return record. I fuck, I hate. Uh, it's. You go four it's downs. If you don't get it, the other team gets the ball at the 20. Football. Yeah. Last year, honestly, was one of the worst years to watch football. I've, there were one Saints game, I think it was Saints-Miami. It was just like fucking 15 minutes of penalties in a row. It's, the fuck am I watching? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we Bitter. had the, the fantasy football debate about me not playing Mock and Kyle or trying to get – I told, told the Red Baron, I don't want any good teams. I will play if I can have every player from the Bears – and the Jets. That's it. That way, when the Bears play a bye week, I'll just field the Jets team. That's <laughs> that it. works. It works for the draft because that means I have to draft two defenses, two kickers, and two quarterbacks right out of the gate because I have to have them so nobody <laughs> takes them. And then, really, realistically, the only first-round player that I'm taking is Jordan Howard. Yeah. And he could bust out anyway. Kyle will be a dick. Kyle will take someone. <laughs> well, he, you know he will. You guys would have to ask me if I plan on drafting him. <laughs> I'll play on those stipulations. I think that's fair. The Jets are could be the worst team in football this year, and the Bears. Madden has ranked uh, them worse than the Browns. Yeah. So I have a question for you guys. That's all and I want. I say this because I was talking to a guy I work with. I picked the Jets from the Bears. He's in charge of fantasy for the work. How do you guys feel about a no trade league? I mean, I don't make any trades really anyway. That's not true. You made a trade last year. 
You lying sack of shit. I'm saying he traded with me the past two years. But in, in general, general, these not... guys, big trade guys. Yeah. Waiver picks, that's that's fine. But I, I'm almost leaning towards no trades. I'm fine with no trades. I kind of like, you know, it, it makes you really, really, really think about your draft. Yeah. I like that. And the waiver that's... wire is the waiver wire. It's pretty much trading. But say no trades. Yeah, I don't mind. I don't mind no trades. Adds a new element. They'll, they'll, they're bitching right now. I also Kyle's think, like, oh, no. <laughs> I also think that maybe we should do a thing. Where I think we should just do what I'm doing. I think everybody should pick two teams and draft all the players from those teams. With the Browns. Browns, right. Browns and the Bears uh, and Jets. Does it be AFC, NFC? No. No, nah, I couldn't do it, though. It would just you know, you know what would be funny, though? It's just, it would just be one person, probably Vito. That would draft two people with like a week four bye. <laughs> <laughs> two teams with a week four <laughs> bye. Do we have everyone that w- remained? We should open it up to the viewers if they want in. Oh my god, could you imagine like a 20 person <laughs> fan league? Just to get rid of that trophy. That'd Kyle so doesn't funny. deserve it anymore. Yeah. You hear me, souls? <laughs> we'll smelt it down. <laughs> Actually, suck. I'd like. <laughs> imagine a viewer wins it and then they like refuse to forfeit the trophy the next year. <laughs> yeah, we're not going to open it up to you guys. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> well, uh, we're getting to that point. Uh, you can find us on uh, many forms of social media: Facebook, <laughs> and getting <laughs> uh, Facebook, getting sports with the drunk. You can uh, find us on the interweb. You can, you can find us on Yellow Pages. Uh, Twitter is gswd underscore four. Make sure to it's use the hashtag gswd for all your daily uses, whether it's f- still forgetting to let me do my gswd thing. Yep. Or ordering a McDouble from Kyle at Burger King. Uh, Instagram also, uh, getting sports with drunk. Uh, you can find us, whatever device you have, <laughs> doesn't matter, iPhone, Google phone, anything. You can find us. Razor. On any. <laughs> I don't know. Where you find, find your us. podcast, we find pos- podcasts, we're there. We're there. We're not a podcast. We are an internet radio show. I'm speaking. Oh my god, that's it. That's it. It's a wrap. Uh, Podbean, iTunes, etc., etc., etc. We are there. We need to combine you and Mock into this. So uh, Mock sometimes is a little too monotoned, but you just kind of like are all over the place. We need your energy with his knowledge to create the perfect. And Kyle's hyped up background noises. <laughs> 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 Um, so, as stated before, we will not be live next week. Um, we will have our brewery shows planned for you guys. So, um, when you tune in, it's still good content. Make sure you listen to it. Um, yeah, do we it. Have, we'll, we'll be watching it. to make sure you do. If, you, um, if you're oh, in won't. Connecticut type of deal um, and you haven't had a chance to go to these two breweries, it's uh, going to be Thimble Island and Black uh, Hog. Uh, we're going to do uh, Cliffside. Oh, and Cliffside Black and Black Hog. Okay, Cliffside and Black Hog. Oh, yeah. We'll get, you know, we're doing interviews from them. Um, talking about their beers, talking about their futures, be great stuff. And then we will be live. Cliff Facebook Side's live. Be on the come up. Yeah, we'll be on Facebook Live and all that from from Philadelphia uh, next weekend and Sheets. Um, <laughs> sheets. And then we'll be back live in two weeks for our free agency show. I want to get Sheets. I want to get Sheets. <laughs> <laughs> so until then, wait. Your, oh, oh, beer reviews. Yeah, beer reviews. Uh, <laughs> wait. Kendall, wait. You had a you wait. You stuck with your starter all nine innings. Had a mound visit. Yep. Uh, Schaefer. Beer. Uh, I have a feeling that it was a Bartolo Colon type outing. Yeah, uh, gave up a lot of runs. We actually won though. Yeah, eight seven. <laughs> um, eight, seven. It's actually a, it's a pretty tasty. Bartolo Colon type day. I gave up five hits, four oh. runs. Oh. Yep. <laughs> yep. Uh, had Schaefer the first time recently, uh, and I fell in love on your grandmother's couch. That's right. That's right. Well, I, I do a lot of uh, drinking in Milford, Connecticut, on that couch. <laughs> Alone, <laughs> <laughs> just me and Adult Swim and a straw. <laughs> and a straw for uh, past That's my results. picture on my phone when he calls is him drinking a Bud Light through a straw. Listen, if you're trying to you know kind of get drunk kind of quick, that's the way to do it. <laughs> you got six beers, all of them Milwaukee's best ice. You get a straw, <laughs> get that bad boy room temp, and you go have at it. Jr., uh, how was the uh, the starter? Starter was good, reliable, nice seven inning game, maybe five hits tops. Uh, the sun juice was good. It was nice. I'd say it's crisp. Crisp. Normally, I avoid Belgian anything, but I like waffles. <laughs> <laughs> no, anything. I'm just like I really, I really don't like Blue Moon Shack Top. That's known. That didn't, you know, it was an ale. It was a little different, but it was, it was good. I liked it. It was good. refreshing. It was crisp. It had good flavor. It wasn't all. Hmm. 
You know what I just realized? This entire show, we didn't touch the private stock. Yeah, because the two all. babbling God. buffoons weren't Ooh. here. Damn it! <laughs> oh wait, no! <laughs> <laughs> quick, uh, quick pause and the, over uh, there. The bullpen came in and did its job. I'm always a fan of the Natagasserits, Del Shandy. Just a nice summer beer. Now, real quick, now that you guys have already done it and can't say no. Uh, this private stock actually has been sitting in my car since the last yeah, show. Yeah, it smells, it, I almost tasted ketchup. <laughs> Something's bad. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. Oh, yeah. You you know what we're talking about. <laughs> it's the white Zinfandel. Mm. Um, oh, is it, and you said the Natagatra, yep. Very good. Uh, I also had a nine-inning b- performance. No mound visits. Yep. Two-hit game, shutout. Nice. One strikeout. <laughs> <laughs> so a very controlled game. Yep. Uh, tiny Beautiful Something Good for Mean defense. Brewing, Pale Ale, uh, Delicious. It's my favorite beer that they put out. Um, it's a great beer. way to stay in shape. <laughs> and it's a great way to stay in shape. Uh, uh, that's any, a copyright infringement. <laughs> any, um, any beer snobs that are listening, I, I know lunch and dinner are a thing. Okay, I get it. But this is better. Um, it's just it's just so easy drinking. Like, I could sit down and drink, you know, I don't know a couple dozen of these. It's not as good as um, Treehouse. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Um, so, yeah, make sure you uh, tune in next week and... Uh, Follow us up on all the social media. We'll be posting tons of stuff. But until then, I'm your host, Cupcake the Riddler. I'm not Sheen Washable. I'm J Mart. <laughs> and I'm the Red Baron. Yeah. <laughs>